Okay, let's take a closer look at the plant growth. So I just did an iron test. So here this pink purple one, that's the Aquasol Aquarium. So it's been exactly 12 days since we started the battle of the substrates, Aquasol versus dirt. Uh, the point of this experiment is to see which substrate gives the best results, the best plant growth. And yeah, it hasn't even been two weeks, but I'm already starting to see the first differences. So for anyone who hasn't seen the previous videos, we basically set up two identical tanks. Uh, same light, same filter, same hardscape, same plants, etc. Um, both have CO2 injection. The only difference really is the substrate. So the tank on the right has a nice layer of Aquasol, which is like an, yeah, an all-in-one complete substrate for specially designed for planted tanks. So it doesn't even have to be washed and it contains a ton of nutrients. And on the left we have a so-called dirted tank. And this is very similar to the Diana Wallstadt method. So on the bottom we have like a layer of potting soil, like the stuff that you use in, for your garden or for your house plants. Um, but the stuff that I bought is specifically designed for water lilies, so you know that it's safe for, yeah, it's safe to use under water. And to make sure that this aquarium doesn't turn into a mud bath, we capped it with a, with a layer of black gravel. So let's first take a closer look at the Aquasol tank. So this aquarium right here is basically set up like how I always set up my aquariums. And 9 out of 10 times you get really really good results with this combination. So we have a nice layer of Aquasol on the bottom, a good quality Aquasol with a lot of nutrients. Then we have good filtration. So here we're using a hang on the back filter which is I think rated at 360 liters per hour. We have CO2 injection and we have pretty, pretty good lighting levels. And of course a lot of plants, like the more plants the better really. By the way, this is I'm really enjoying this light guys. This is uh, not sponsored or anything, but this is a Chihiros A2 series. And I've been using these for a few months now and I have to say that I'm really, really enjoying this. I'll leave a link for this light in the description. It's quite a budget light as well actually, it's quite cheap. So definitely check that out. And I've actually increased the intensity by another 10% 10, 10 since, since a few days now. So this is also something I do with pretty much all my setups. Um, I run an 8 hour photo period on all my tanks. Like it doesn't matter if the aquarium is one week old or one year old. I always go for an 8 hour photo period, this works best for me. But what I do with new setups is that I slowly increase the intensity. So with these two experiment tanks, I started with 60%. And after one week, I bumped it up to 70%. And probably next week we'll go to 75 and then to 80%. But I'll only increase the intensity if I know that the aquarium is stable enough. And if I, that I know that the aquarium can handle that increased light. So if I'm starting to see LG period, then of course I'm not going to increase the intensity. I'll actually maybe decrease, decrease the intensity to... I know back to 60% for, for a week or two weeks. So I'm always trying to find the right balance between the light, the CO2 and the fertilizers. But I'm also trying to see if I can like push the boundaries a little bit, push the limits. And just trying to increase the light intensity just to get the best possible plant growth. Okay, we got a little bit sidetracked there. Let's get back to the tank. Let's take a closer look at the plant growth. So in front we have the carpet of Monte Carlo. And this is uh, starting to spread out really, really nicely. So we see all those new side shoot growing sideways, that's good. Um, behind the Monte Carlo we have the Marsalea Herzuta. That's that clover, clover looking plant. Um, yeah, do, doing good. We have a lot of new growth. So all these light green leaves, that's all new leaves. So that's doing absolutely amazing. Then in the middle we have of course the Busa Flandra and the Moss. Yeah, it's a bit harder to tell there if you have new growth um, behind that. Actually, the, uh, the Ludwigia, Ludwigia repens is doing really well. This has grown like, it was first behind the wood and now it's popping up. So that has grown like 5 centimeters. Mm, yeah, of course, the Rotalas, the Rotala orange juice has grown, <laughs> I think, 10 centimeters in the past 12 days. So that's doing really good. And then lastly, we have the Microntimum umbrosum. I'm gonna call this dwarf, dwarf baby tears, or not actually. Giant baby tears. My Grantmo Mumbrozon, aka Giant Baby Tears, is uh, yeah doing good. Um, it's a bit hard to see; it's still covered sort of behind the wood, but this is uh, doing really well. Overall, this tank after 12 days is looking yeah exactly kind of how I expect it to look. Decent plant growth, and it's only going to get better from now on. Also, no real signs of algae just yet. I mean, there is a small coat of like brown algae and a little bit of green dust algae but that is yeah i mean in my opinion that's completely normal 
Um, in the previous video about this experiment, a few of you asked if I'm gonna cover this side again to avoid the light coming from the, from the big shallow. Um, I thought about it, but I don't think I'll do that this time because um, right now we're using CO2 in this aquarium before we were not. And also, like this aquarium is also receiving extra light from the window over there, so I think it's, uh, I think it's fair enough. So guys, just a really quick interruption. Just want to let you know that I'm doing a giveaway on my Instagram page. Uh, we just reached 75,000 followers there. So to say thank you, I did a massive giveaway together with Flux Aqua. Uh, you can win a beautiful light screen from Flux Aqua. So click the first link in the description to go directly to Instagram. And now back to the video. Then we're moving on to the other aquarium. This one is the, um, the Wallstadt method aquarium basically. So this one is very much out of my comfort zone. I've never set up an aquarium with dirt before. Um, but I have to say that the past 12 days have been a very smooth ride. And I think the plant growth is almost identical to the aquarium with Aquasol. So I think when I prepared the substrate layer for this aquarium, I did make a small mistake. Um, I was scraping away the dirt from the edges of the glass, just so we wouldn't have the dirt visible in the front. I saw people do this in other videos as well, but I think I shouldn't have done this. Because right now, there is basically no dirt directly underneath the Monte Carlo. So it will take a bit longer before the roots of the Monte Carlo will find the dirt that is a little bit behind it. So I think I shouldn't have done that. But overall the plant growth is still very very good here. I mean even here with the Monte Carlo you can also see that it's starting to spread nicely. Maybe not as much as in the Aquasol tank but yeah now we know the reason. Uh, Mars Leia is looking exactly the same. Rotala is looking exactly the same, has grown crazy. Uh, Ludwiga is even a bit taller here, but it might have been a bit taller from the start as well, so I'm not sure about that. Um, also, the, uh, the Hygrophila Araguaya is not growing too much yet here, maybe needs a bit more time to get established. And the, um, the Giant Baby Tears, yes, we got it right. Giant Baby Tears are also doing really, really good. So I would say the plant growth is, is almost identical to the, uh, the Aquasol tank, but there is one big difference. And I think maybe you guys have noticed it already, but if you take a look at the Monte Carlo and also the Giant Baby Tears, you will see that the tips are very, very light. So over here on this side as well, see the tips are almost, almost white. And if you look at the uh, Giant Baby Tears on this side, see? They're a lot more vibrant and green. Same goes for the Monte Carlo. So vibrant green versus very light, almost, yeah, almost white, just very pale. So the pale leaves are like a clear sign of a nutrient deficiency. Uh, so I was a little bit surprised to see a nutrient deficiency already. Now I'm not 100% sure uh, which nutrient it is. I think it's a combination of uh, nitrogen and iron. I've been testing the water a little bit and there's just a clear difference between the amount of nitrates in this aquarium, the, the Aquasol aquarium and the nitrates in the uh, Wallstadt aquarium. Same goes for the iron, like I still have the iron test here. So I just did an iron test, so here this pink purple one, that's the Aquasol aquarium. So this is even quite high, this is about one milligram of iron per liter. Per liter? Yeah, I think so, I think it's per liter. And this is the uh, iron test for the Wallstadt Aquarium, which is basically nothing. So there's no iron in the water column of the Wallstadt Aquarium. So this kind of explains the, the, the pale leaves in the Monte Carlo and the giant baby tears. So I'm a little bit surprised to see a nutrient deficiency already. Uh, but like I said, I have zero experience with this type of substrate. And I mean, if it was just the, the Monte Carlo, then I would understand it because I'm sure that those roots still need to get deeper into the substrate to find the dirt. Um, but the, the giant baby tears are directly planted into that substrate there, so they should be getting enough nutrients. Unless there's just not enough nutrients into the, in the dirt that I chose for this aquarium. So to be honest with you guys, I'm a little bit unsure of how to deal with this issue. I mean, of course we can easily fix it just by adding some liquid fertilizers. But my idea for this experiment was to only rely on the nutrients from the substrate layer. So that's why it's, it's the battle of the substrates and we can see which substrate gives the best results and the best plant growth. So yeah, I'm just not really sure what to do right now. I mean, I think it uh, should be a, a group decision as well. So I'm gonna ask you guys, like, what should we do? Should we add liquid fertilizers? Um, should we not do anything? Should we just leave it like this? I mean, the aquarium is only 12 days old and 
I'm sure those root systems are still developing and I'm sure, well, I'm not 100% sure, but I think those root systems will find that dirt and maybe eventually the nutrient deficiency will sort itself out. Now I know that there are some viewers on the channel that have a lot more experience with dirt than I have. So I'm hoping that you guys are watching this and hopefully you guys can give me some suggestions on what to do with this nutrient deficiency and then hopefully we can come to a nice solution. Even though there's a very low concentration of iron and nitrogen available in the water column, I don't think it, it hasn't really stopped most of the plants. I mean, they're, they're growing like crazy. I think I'll wait a few more days and then trim the rotala stems because they're really getting quite long. Same in the uh, aquarium with aquasol. But if you look here, the, like, the stems are a bit more, um, a bit more orange. Yeah, a bit more orange red. And here the stems are a bit more, more pinkish. Maybe it's, yeah, well, no, on camera it's a bit different, but it's, here's more pink, there's more orange. Now what I think will also help this uh, nutrient deficiency is if we add more bio load to the aquarium. So I've added the shrimp back in after, I think, nine days. I've been testing the water for ammonia and nitrite as well. And they were, uh, they were absolutely zero right now. So it's safe for fish and shrimp. So the cherry shrimp went back in. Um, Amano shrimp are still not back in. I just need to catch them from my other aquarium. But I actually want to add some fish to this aquarium. So I'm really enjoying these two experiment things, but I think we can make them even better if we just add some, yeah, some movement into the aquarium. So I think some small fish would be, uh, would be really cool here. I mean, the tanks itself are only 20 liters, so they definitely have to be small. But uh, yeah, maybe just some guppies or some platies or something. I haven't had any live bearers in, in years, so maybe this could be a nice option. So I think 20 or like 25 kilometers away from here, there's a really, really big fish shop that I've shown before on the channel as well, but it's like a long time ago. Anyway, let's go there now and let's see if we can pick up some nice fish for our experiment tanks. So this place is called Maui's Fish Kwekerai. I'll leave a link to their website in the description for you guys. And this place is always nice to visit. It's quite big and they have a huge variety of fish. And what I like about this place is that it's just organized. At the beginning of the store you have the nano fish and shrimp section. And further down it's basically just divided up per continent. So they have a large section with South America with different types of tetras, cichlids and placos. And on the opposite side they have Asia. Behind that they have Africa. And all the way in the back they have a saltwater section as well. So if you're looking for something specific you need to know exactly where to look. Now you might notice that some of these tanks are pretty full, maybe a little bit too full actually, and I think I know why this is. So next week, the last weekend of November, there was supposed to be a large convention slash exhibition here in the Netherlands. So this is like a two day event with workshops, demonstrations, loads of shops offering great deals and stuff. And this shop, this place was also supposed to be there. But literally just one week ago, the Dutch government announced a new lockdown. So the event got canceled, even though pretty much everything was prepared already. So that's a real bummer and I think that's why this shop currently has quite a lot of fish in stock. But honestly, if you come here during the weekend, it's always crazy busy. So I'm sure most of these fish will find a new owner really, really soon. But yeah, if you're from the Netherlands or visiting the Netherlands, I would definitely recommend visiting this shop. All right, we're back. Mission accomplished. First bag, we have some auto sinkless. So I bought six of these and we will split them up into these two uh, experiment tanks. And they will just stay in there temporarily uh, just to help with some of the early algae issues uh, definitely 20 liters a bit too small for auto sinkless so they will only stay in there for like maybe one or two weeks and then i'll move them to the big shallow but these are definitely my uh, my favorite algae eaters and i don't think you can ever have enough auto sinkless in your tanks now we have one more bag and i'm super excited about this one this was the real reason why we went to this shop i don't know if you'll be able to see anything but in this bag we have a group of tiger antler guppies, yellow yellow tiger antler guppies. So I'm super super excited about this. The males are absolutely beautiful. And honestly, I can't remember the last time I had guppies. I think it was like more than five years ago. So I'm super excited about this. I think these are a great addition to our uh, experiment tanks. I should have about four or five males and four or five females. So again, we'll split these up into the, in the into the two tanks and then hopefully we'll get some breathing action. That'll be amazing. So I'm gonna just gonna let these guys temperature acclimate for a little bit. 
and then we'll, uh, we'll split them up and uh, add them to the aquariums. All right, the auto sinkless are in, three in each tank. Now they were looking a little bit skinny. Um, yeah, I think that's always when you buy auto sinkless at the shop. They're always a little bit skinny because usually those grams, they don't have any algae in them. And these guys are all wild caught, you know, and they, they're used to eating, uh, eating algae. And I think I saw this video recently on the Cram Co-op channel where Corey was talking about this. Like the whole process from getting them from the wild, getting them to the wholesaler, to the shop, to our house. Yeah, yeah they can easily take a couple of weeks. Of course, they get some food during that, that, uh, that time as well. But yeah, they're usually eating algae, so that's what they will eat. And they're stressed during that time as well, of course. So hopefully right now they will settle in nicely here. And there's plenty of algae right now in this aquarium. We have plenty of dust algae on the glass. And they love to eat dust algae, some diatoms as well. So hopefully these guys will yeah, get a little bit chubby and get healthy and happy. So now let's release the guppies. He's had a perfect choice for this aquarium. Really, really happy with that. Look at the colors on that male. So in this aquarium, we have, I think three females now and two males. And over here in the aquasol tank, we have two males and two females. So yeah, let's see if we can get some breeding action. That'll be really cool. I mean, they're guppies. I mean, guppies always breed, right? Shouldn't be too difficult. There's this one in the corner, in the corner right there. That one has the most amazing tail. If it would only show itself, that'd be nice. Hey, come on, come to the front. There he is. Wow. Come on, come on. Just show yourself. Kind of feel bad for the females. You're also beautiful in your own way. <laughs> mm -hmm. 